second part of our lecture, we will discuss support vector machines. Support vector machines are maximum margin linear classifiers, where they aim to maximize the margin between the decision hyperplane and the closest sample from both classes to the hyperplane. In the process of maximizing the margin, we need to solve a constraint optimization problem. For that purpose, uh, we use the method of Lagrange multipliers. So, first take a look at that. Method of Lagrange multipliers for constraint optimization. Given a cost function, that is uh, jxy, suppose that we are trying to find the minimum of that function with respect to the constraint, uh, a function of x and y that is equal to zero. Using the method of Lagrange multipliers, we define a new function, that is Lagrangian x, y, and lambda, and we uh, subtract lambda times g x, y minus c uh, from that cost function. And what do we do? We find the partial derivatives del L del X and del L del Y, equate them to zero and uh, find the set of equations. And from those equations, we drop out lambda and substitute these uh, relations between X and Y to the original equation for, uh, sorry, uh, substitute this relation between x and y into the constraint equation, g, x, y, and solve the equation for x and y. Uh, as an example, uh, let us find the minimum values of the function f, x, y, that is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 2y, subject to the constraint x plus 2y equals to 4. So, let us first construct Lagrangian, which is, uh, we take the original equation here and subtract lambda times uh, this equation. Uh, so, we move 4 to this part, uh, x plus uh, 2y minus 4. Uh, when we take the derivative of the Lagrangian, we get 2x minus 2 minus lambda equals to 0. So lambda becomes equal to 2x minus 2. Uh, taking derivative with respect to y, we have 2y minus 2 minus lambda equal to 0. So lambda is also equal to y minus 1. When we eliminate lambda from the equations, what we get is y equals 2x minus 1. When we substitute y in the constraint equation, which was x plus 2y equals to 4, we get x to be uh, 6 over 5, and we get y to be 7 over 5. Then we, we can uh, find the value of the function f subject to the constraint uh, we insert x and y, and we can find the value of the function f at minus 9 over 5, subject to this constraint. And uh, we can have another, another exa example. Let us find the minimum of the function with respect to the constraint x squared plus y squared, that's equal to 4. Again, we have our function minus lambda times uh, this expression that's equal to 0. So x squared plus y squared minus 4 equals 0. So we put it here. Uh, take the derivatives and where we get x, plus x equals to y. Substituting uh, x equals y into constraint equation, this one. We get 
x equals y equals plus minus square root of 2. So first for x equals uh, y equals uh, square root of 2 we get fxy that is 4 minus 4 square root of 2 which is the minimum of the function while for x equals y equals minus square root of 2 we get the we get the maximum sorry this is maximum of the function subject to the constraint uh, we have so for the support vector machines uh, we use uh, this Lagrangian uh, formulation and I will uh, try to explain it uh, how do we use it so let us have a training set of m feature vectors xi with their true class labels yi uh, that's either minus one or one and we have m uh, such uh, vector pairs and we have two classes omega one and omega two and suppose that they are uh, linearly separable so we can fit a uh, hyperplane uh, for two dimensional case this is a line uh, here and we can try to maximize this margin between the points so the separating hyperplane uh, is defined as w transpose times x plus b so if this value is greater than zero uh, we have our first class if this value is greater than uh, lesser than zero we have our second class and these margins are where we have the value of plus one here for example and minus one here for these values uh, it turns out that the value uh, it turns out that the uh, margin between these uh, points uh, is 2 over uh, 2 over w uh, absolute value of uh, w so the weight vector is perpendicular to the separating hyperplane uh, in this uh, depiction the full lines are the support vectors which are expressed with the equations uh, double transpose times xi plus 1 plus b equals 1 and double transpose times xi uh, plus b equals minus 1 in order to maximize this margin this is our margin we will uh, minimize the square of the norm of the weight vector the cost function j is then defined as this since we would like to have uh, we would like to be able to estimate our uh, class labels by using this expression we can use this expression as the constraint for minimization of this uh, cost function then we, we can define uh, our Lagrangian here uh, we have uh, a number of parameters that is uh, equal to the number of uh, samples and we have we, we can define our Lagrangian like uh, so this is our original function cost function here and this is our Lagrangian parameters for each sample yi and xi and here we just multiplied both sides with yi since yi times yi is always positive because it's either minus 1 or 1 uh, this part becomes yi times omega trans w transpose times xi plus B, like this and this part of the equation becomes 1 so we uh, 
move one to the other side and we have our constraint equation here. So, of course, uh, these parameters needs to be greater than or equal to zero all the time. So let us find the gradients with respect to the weight vector and the bias and equate them to zero. For the weight vector, we have del L or over del W, that is W minus lambda i, y i, x i, that's equal to zero. So we have W equals to from i equals 1 to m, lambda i, y i, x i. For del L over del B equals 0, we have i equals 1 to m, lambda i, y i equals 0. You can see that here. Uh, let me move uh, B out of this summation. You can find the derivative. Okay, the above formulation is called Lagrangian support, Lagrangian formulation for the support vector machines. As an example, uh, we can find the separating hyperplane for the following feature vectors for the two classes, class 1 and class 2. For the first class, we have x1, x2, and for the second classes, we have x3 and x4. These are our uh, samples. And since we have w equals i from i equals 1 to m, lambda i, y i, x i, and since our feature vectors are two dimensional, we have two dimensional weight vectors. Let us calculate uh, lambda 1. 1 here and lambda 2 and 1 here lambda 3 and the first component and lambda 4 and the first component here uh, since our uh, class labels are positive for the first couple of samples and negative for the for second couple of samples we have negative 1 minus 1 for the yi here. Uh, similarly we can uh, find the second row of our uh, vector and we can find the expressions for uh, w1 and w2 by using these uh, by using this equation, and since we have uh, from i to uh, i equals one to m, lambda i y i equals zero because of this, we can calculate this. Uh, we can uh, insert lambdas with this and multiply them uh, with uh, y i's. Uh, and when we return to our constraint equation, we have W transpose times Xi plus B, that's equal to Yi. We can just multiply for uh, multiply W transpose times Xi for each samples. For the first sample, we, call, we get W1, W2 plus, one, plus B equals 0. For the second sample, we get W1 minus W2 plus 1. That's equals 1. Similarly, we get uh, the other equations. Now we have a set of seven linear equations with the parameters vector. That's, uh, we have seven parameters. Uh, W1, W2, B, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and lambda 4. We can solve these seven equations by forming a uh, coefficient matrix A, 
by using the coefficients of each of these parameters uh, and equate uh, it to a uh, the constants and form a system of linear equations then uh, by taking the inverse of uh, the coefficient matrix and multiplying uh, with the constant vector we can get the coefficients that is w1 w2 b lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and lambda 4 then we have our uh, support vectors which is uh, W1, W2 and B. However, this formulation requires us to uh, obtain a, the inverse of a matrix that is uh, as large as uh, the number of our samples because when we have four samples we have four lambda parameters as well as uh, we have uh, in addition to that we add the uh, dimensionality of our feature vectors uh, so this a matrix can be a very large matrix and which uh, would become a problem if we have a lot of samples or uh, high dimensional uh, feature vectors in the next uh, lecture we will see the dual formulation for the support vector machines which uh, is a much better formulation because we don't uh, we won't need to take an inverse of a, such a huge matrix using that formulation thank you for listening